I'm specifically going to focus on three traits that make a relationship valuable, but I'm, I'm going to tell you a little backstory about why I feel so passionately about this. And it is because of a quote that changed my life. It's a super, super common quote. I'm sure you've all heard it. And the quote goes, you are a product of the five most people you surround yourself with. So if you surround yourself with unsuccessful people, you will become unsuccessful. If you surround yourself with successful people, you will become successful. This quote drastically changed my life for the good, yet there was some negative things that happened to me because of this quote. And I will also say that I believe the quote is insufficient. I believe the quote is true. You will certainly become like the people you surround yourself with, but I think it's insufficient. Uh, let me elaborate on that. Why do I think it's insufficient? Because when you hear that quote, you are the product of the five most people you surround yourself with, what you think to yourself is, I have to surround myself with more successful people. But then if you don't know how you define a successful person, so let's say, okay, let's say like me, when I heard the quote, I was in college. I was really into entrepreneurship. I was really into YouTube and podcasting. I eventually I would become into that. But when I heard the quote, I was in a fraternity and I was surrounded by people who drank alcohol and smoked weed and did drugs. So my thought was, okay, I need to hang out with less of these people and hang out with more of these entrepreneurial make money people. And while overall that was a hugely beneficial decision to move in that direction, in some sense it was a, a misalignment because the thought was successful people are people who make more money. And as you've heard and as I will preach to you and you can go find interviews of many, many rich people saying this is money doesn't bring you happiness. So if you define successful people as people who are more ambitious in making money, they might, it might, it's a partial solution I feel is the case because money isn't everything. But then I don't want to harp on the point of money. I'm harping on the point of how you define successful relationships because it's very easy to get led astray. So for example, I surrounded myself with people who are obsessed with work and I love work. I love my job. I love this podcast more than anything. But if you become obsessed with work, you become like Ebenezer Scrooge. You uh, begin to lack in your relationships. You begin to prioritize work over the people you love. So I guess uh, I think the quote is insufficient because it doesn't explain enough. And I also don't think it's true 100% of the time. So let me give you an example. You're a product of the five most people you surround yourself with. Let's say I'm a Christian. I believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. I believe that the Bible is the ultimate truth that will lead you to Jesus and Jesus will, can save you for eternity. So let me pose a situation. You can talk to, let's say, you're, you're the product of the five most people you surround yourself with. You can talk, be in a room with five billionaires. I'm with Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, whatever. I'm in a room with five billionaires. Those are considered probably the most successful people on earth. Or I can be in a room with uh, murderers, rapists, the scum of the earth in a, in a prison cell. But in the prison cell, I'm preaching the word. These people who are murderers, who are rapists, who are what we call the scum of the earth, the least successful people, much less successful than my college buddies who drink alcohol and smoke weed, the least successful people they've got in life imprisonment, but maybe they've hit the end of the road. They, they want to turn a leaf and, and maybe they, they don't even want to turn a leaf. Maybe they're just here to hear me talk about the Bible because it gets them some prison brownie points or whatever. But in one situation, I'm preaching the Bible to these five people. And in the other situation, I'm in a room with Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and all these billionaires. Now, I don't know how these rooms would look because I'm not in them and I've not been in them. But what I imagine is that, the, what I imagine is that in the room with the billionaires, they'd be probably talking about a lot of big financial terms that I don't understand. Uh, they'd probably be obsessed with the idea of money, obsessed with the idea of work. I imagine a lot of them would not have great relationships. Maybe the only benefit of being in that room is that I would know how to make more money. And I might not even know how to make more money being in that room because they're so far ahead of me that the leagues of me to them, I might not even benefit. But what if in this room where I'm preaching the Bible to these scum of earth in prison, maybe 
by forcing myself to teach the Bible to them, I'm learning the true word of God at a deeper level. Maybe by uh, seeing these scum of earth. I, I, I hate calling them scum of earth. I'm, I'm scum of earth. We are all, we've all betrayed God, but I'm using the reason I'm using the analogy scum of earth is because of the quote, you're the product of the five most people you surround yourself with. I want to go to the extremes. People would say that the prisoners are like on the extreme low and they would say that these billionaires on the extremes high. But in this hypothetical situation, if I'm preaching to these prisoners, God could work through me, could, I don't want to, I actually don't want to focus on going to heaven because I could preach the same message to the rich people and they could go to heaven. So let's ignore the ability to preach and, and, and help someone and God use you to help someone go to heaven. But let's just talk about in this circle, I might start to see why, why did these people suffer? What happened in their childhood? I get to learn more about the Bible as I teach them about the Bible. Maybe I get to pray. Maybe I learn more compassion. And I guess my whole point with this analogy is not that uh, you wouldn't benefit from going in a room with billionaires, but it's the point that if you take that quote, you're the product of the five most people you surround yourself with, I'm giving you two as far opposing situations as possible. A room with billionaires and a room with horribly committing criminals in prison. But as you can see, as I just explained, I might benefit more from the room with prisoners. I don't know. I might benefit more from the room with with uh, uh, with the rich people. Now, of course, over a prolonged period of time, I'm sure I would not want my core group of friends to be the prisoners. But I think, and that is why I agree with the quote, you're a product of the five most people you surround yourself with. But what I think the deeper message is, um, and what I would go as far to say is that you're a product of the conversations you are having. I think that's a way better quote. You are a product of the conversations you are having. The reason that I can enter a prison for a small amount of time and say that I might benefit from it more than the billionaire scenario is that in that hypothetical scenario, I'm teaching them the Bible. The conversation is about the word. In the prolonged scenario, if I were just to hang out in prison cells for a year straight, I don't think I would be able to control every conversation to be about the Bible to be so powerful. And uh, it's the prolonged conversations. It's the same thing with the, the billionaires. Over a year, I'm probably gonna learn more about how to make money because of the conversation. It all comes back to the conversation qualities. So while I agree the quote is true that you're the product of the five most people you surround yourself with, I believe the reason it is true is because you're a product of the conversations you are having. And I think that gives people a better message because if you might hear the message, you, you need to surround yourself with more successful people and you're in college and you're like, I'm in every entrepreneurship club. I don't know how to surround myself with more successful people. Are you, you might feel helpless to the fact like, where do I meet these successful people? What does a successful person even look like? And I think if you think of it as I want to have more successful conversations, then that will benefit you. That is something that has came to me. Leave your opinions on that below.